hurdles coach and said she really learnt the high jump and the technical necessities of it along with Mahochi because she developed. Turn our attention to the track. There are 26 men down here ready to sprint round 25 laps. Field full of talent. Imani Burhan Clipper picked up a bronze medal in Berlin four years ago and a bronze medal at the start of the week in the 5000 here in Munich. He's also got the fastest time in this field. That's why he's got that blue bib on. Reigning champion from last time round, Mohad Amdouni isn't here. Neither is Bashir Abdi of Belgium. Bashir Abdi having some amazing marathon exploits this season. Jimmy Gressier, best known, I think, for his cross-country expo exploits. He certainly is to me. But that 27-24 personal best and season's best is very handy. The Frenchman. He's tough, he will fight all the way to the end. And Yamani Burhan, Clipper and Jimmy Gressier have raced for years and years. And we're set to see another battle between those two. Aris Kaya, Ali Kaya of Turkey, to pick up a silver and a bronze at these championships. What can Aris Kaya do here? Post broadcasters choosing to quite rightly focus on some of their home talent. Philemon Abraham. Germany there, best known as a mountain runner, but he's doing a very good transfer over onto the track. That's Isaac Camelli of Belgium. And he said when we saw him warming up, he was the first European at the World Championships. He came home in 10th in Oregon, but he did look a little bit tired in the 5K, couldn't match the lift of pace. Jakob Ingebrigtsen, Mark Scott, it's actually a triplet. I think there'll be uh, not many triplets in the world, let alone ones that are world-class athletes. Indoor bronze medal back in Belgrade in March, second all-time in his personal best. Sam Aitken there, his teammate, is fifth all-time in the UK. Strength and depth in Great Britain over 10,000 metres. To have two athletes that are fifth and second all-time in one field is fantastic considering what our nation has achieved over the years. Nils Bugot of Germany goes in lane two. To Fabian Schlump, we saw in the women's marathon at the start of the programme, did suffer some heart information after suffering COVID. So let's hope that we got his back to his best. So Samuel Fitwi Sepahatu of Germany, under 23, cross country medalist. Taking the warm applause of the crowd. As with every final, they've laid the gold, silver, and bronze medals out. Yeah, it's will be painfully aware of what they're aiming for and just in case they happen to forget those medals just poised on the start line and uh, full start I did think the men looked a little bit unsteady I did think that could be coming it's a lot of nerves they'll be anticipating 25 laps of hard 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 work to the um, layman at home, I can assure you, every one of the laps these men will do will likely feel like a sprint to anyone else. Chris Cohen, the very, very busy chief referee here in Munich, awarding a yellow, a uh, green card to the field. You say it's unsettled. You see so many of them just lifting their back feet there, just not quite settled. 26 is entrance is a lot of men in the 10,000 meters they'll be very used to racing like this though let's just hope they can all stay out of trouble and they can let themselves slot into decent packs as we let these 25 laps unfold looks like Jimmy Gressier on the outside keen to ensure things get moving fast Mark Scott was the leader of the the inside group Had two waves there in the start already you can see some pushing and shoving in the middle of the group Jimmy Gressier taken through. That's a swift 30 seconds for the opening lap, the opening 200 metres. So Jimmy Gressier of France pushing the pace right from the start. And I'm sure Gressier will be aware of the, the need for some success for France at these championships. I heard them talking outside the stadium of just how much they wish they could build towards Paris. A living round still. Back to the men's 10,000 metres. Jimmy Gressier has been at the lead now for three laps. He took them through the first kilometre in two minutes and 40 seconds, which is 
pretty much off my pacing chart that I use for championship 10,000 meter running. That is below 27 minute pace, could be as fast as 26.40, which would obliterate the championship record and uh, get pretty close to a European record. But Jimmy Gressier, he's an aggressive athlete. He's so good over cross country. And I think when you've got that strength um, over cross country, you can perhaps back yourself that you're not gonna fall apart in the latter stages of the 10,000 meters. Jimmy Gressier, This race as fast as possible is going to bring in the highest possible position and maybe a decent time as well. It's fantastic conditions. There's some flags across of us from us in the commentary position and they are not moving at all. As Jimmy Gressier is whizzing around the infield. And the athletes waiting so long to get their championships underway and I think that will just entice them to much change, change in the men's 10,000 metres. Jimmy Gressier of France still in the lead. Mark Scott of Great Britain and Northern Ireland in second. Aris Kaya of Turkey is in third. He's the only athlete not on the rail. They're starting to bunch ever so slightly behind Jimmy Gressier. He slowed slightly 240 through the first kilometre, 244 through the second. It's still super quick. So I don't think any of the men will bother overtaking Jimmy Gressier. I think that he's doing a fantastic job at pacemaking this field. Sam Atkins just sitting in fourth place. He ran his brilliant 10,000 meter time and he's meant to be pacemaking a race. He's one of the fastest in Europe all time and in Great Britain all time. He's in fourth place at the moment. Isaac Camelli just in fifth place on the shoulder of Sam Atkins. This is the second group, the chase pack if you like. Kawal, better known as a steeplechaser, ended up being handed the gold medal only after the disqualification of terms of 190. So same people in the lead group, but it is Mark Scott in the lead at the moment. Sam Atkin just nipping off for a drink, and that would suggest they've really slowed. It was 8.09 through 3K, a 2.45 kilometer. Jimmy Gressier still at the lead then. But it does look like it's really slowed down a bit, and that's a very interesting tactic of Jimmy Gressier. I mean, I doubt he's feeling Kind of too, he wouldn't have gone off at 2.45, 2.44, 2.45 if he wasn't feeling good. Johan Kowal swings the whole way round the group. He was in the chase pack. He's perhaps keen to run an even pace and he's entered for the London Marathon in October. Kowal, and uh, he will not want to leave anything to a kick. And he's trying to get this race back moving into the realms of, of the pace they were going before. It's around about 27 minutes, 27 and a half. Yes, I was lucky enough to be in Passe at the European 10,000 metres cup in May, which Gressier won his first 10,000 metres for several years, and he won it in 27, 24, 51. And he started off at a very quick pace on that occasion, just broke the field. He hasn't done that on this occasion, but Gressier, I think that run gave him a huge amount of confidence. It was his first 10,000 metres, quality 10,000 metres, since his days in the under-23 ranks, and he went up to th number three on the French list. And I think he feels that the French record... I think yeah, Jakob Badalec has been learning his trade over and over again through the years. And you can see it, and that, that difference in the technique is just pretty aggressive. Right, so Johan Kaul of France was leading for a couple of laps. And it was Jemena Berhan Kripper of Italy that pulled this group back into the lead. Jimmy Gressier back in fifth place at the moment. He led them through the first three kilometres in 8.09. Coming up on 5K now, that will give us an indication of how much they've slowed. 250, so they did a 254, now they're back to 250 in their kilometres. That's the first time we've seen Emil Caress of Great Britain and Northern Ireland a little bit higher up, but there's a massive pack here. We've got a few athletes that have just drifted off the back of the pack, just three. So that leaves us with 23 pretty much all in contention as they've come through halfway in a very respectable time. Kaya piling on the pressure at the front. A very respectable, accomplished athlete. He was third at the recent European Cup. So we would have raced a lot of these athletes at that event a few weeks ago. European cross-country medals. Of course, Yasmin Chan of Turkey took a brilliant women's 10,000 meter gold. She dropped a 66, 67 lap on the rest of the field and they couldn't respond. Eilish McColgan and Norma Salpeter holding on for second and third. But Kaya just swinging wide, perhaps a reluctant leader. And that will be Italy's Yamanaham Bahan Kripa. 
who's going to end up in the lead. No, he's let Mark Scott come through. Emil Caress just starting to move around the outside. Emil Caress is more of an endurance athlete, I'd say, more in the 10K half marathon spectrum. He did run a brilliant 3,000 metres recently over in Ireland. 7.44, closing with a 56 second lap, which when you're better known as a, as a 10K athlete, some serious speed from Emil Caress. He's uh, looking to get this race back a little bit underneath that sort of 28 minute pace. They've drifted a bit slow. Emil Caress of Great Britain and Northern Ireland at the moment from Kaya of Turkey, Scott of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And Kripa just keep having a very quiet race for Italy, very briefly at the front, just when they wanted to close up the gap on Kaul. But Kripa happy just to resettle into the pack. Back on the track, Mark Scott of Great Britain, Northern Ireland in the lead. We saw Emil Caress for a while. Scott of Portugal just clutching his ribs there. I can only imagine it's a bad stitch, maybe stomach issues for the Portuguese athlete. Jimmy Gressier on the outside of this group. Look how close that pack's running to each other. They're so used to running in a big pack, whether it's on the track. Oh, and Sam Atkins of Great Britain, Northern Ireland, just I think probably giving his heel clip there a little bit. That will raise his heart rate, spike the adrenaline. See tall Sam Atkins there in the middle of the group. Let's hope he's not had the heel of his shoe caught or anything like that. That could be problematic. Sam Atkins, he's got, he's got no chance to get out of there. Sometimes when an athlete gets clipped like that, they might fly to the front and say, I've had enough of running in a massive group like this. Mark Scott at the front, he's got a brilliant change of pace, Mark Scott, on his day. That World Indoor bronze medal was really impressive. Bonnie of Belgium drifting out the outside. <laughs> Cripper just nipping down the inside line of Mark Scott. I wonder if Mark Scott thought he was moving aside to let Cripper take the lead and didn't realise he was going to get overtaken by Deboni as well. Isaac Camelli looks, he looked this good probably at a similar stage in the 5K and then just seemed to run out of legs. He did have a brilliant run at the World Championship, so, so for the first, the first time, Imani Burhan, Cripper of Italy making a concerted move at the front. The only time, other time we've seen him doing anything when he was trying to claw back Johan Kowal of France. They go through with eight laps to go, two miles. These men will think that is absolutely fine. The reps they will do on the track, the tempos they'll do out on the road. Two miles is nothing for these men. They'd eat that for breakfast. Imanihan Burhan Klipper in the lead at the moment. Deboni of Belgium put himself in second place. Isaac Camelli of Belgium up in second place as well. Jimmy Gressier keeping himself involved. Sam Atkins just going to have a re-look. Just look like he got caught from behind and he did really well to stay on his feet there. Extraordinary how this final has developed. We're having so many reluctant leaders, aren't we? I don't want to be in the front. You have a go. Come on, someone else come through and do the hard work. I'm just wondering whether this is why Yamani Kripo has taken the lead and started to crank up the pace just a little bit. He's a good finisher, he's a good kicker, we've seen that many, many times in the past. But there are faster sprinters in there, not least of which would be Gressier. And I'm just thinking, he needs to take a bit of the sting out of some of those legs behind him. He certainly does. Everyone's starting to have a go, everyone's believing they can get involved in this final. It was 13.53 through halfway. So that's sub 28 minute pace, but I feel like they've slowed up so slightly. And Sam Atkins, unfortunately, just withdrawing there, he's holding his back. And to be fair, that was a he really had to contort his body to stay aloft. And it wouldn't be a surprise if he's perhaps tweaked something in his back. So a shame. We still have two athletes from Great Britain and Northern Ireland in there. Mark Scott, one of the fastest athletes for his nation all time, and Emil Caress working together back in seventh and eighth. But it's a big pack. And that's going to start getting annoying for these athletes if they're chopping their stride and continually coming under, under pressure from the side and the back. It's, uh, it makes them real uncomfortable running down there. We've also got Ifran Gide of Ireland, the 21-year-old. He's the highest placed of two great Irish athletes. He's uh, just seen his training partner, Mark English, take a brilliant bronze medal in the men's 800. Gressier, though, really looking very calm and collected at the moment. No sign of tension or strain on his face. Looking back, Mark Scott, we've been talking about him quite a bit. Looks as though he's working quite hard there. He's looking as though he's really having to push to stay with the first time of asking. Three women clear at this height now. Fields 
starting to spread out in the men's 10,000 meters. It wasn't particularly quick through 8K, 22 and a half minutes, around about 28 minute pace. And then the moves are starting to come. Emani Barhan Kripa has turned the screw at the front. This time, when they come through the start finish line, it's going to be just four laps to go. That is a mile. That, and I said two miles is nothing for these men. One mile is really a point where you're going to start kicking. Emil Caressa, Great Britain and Northern Ireland, has moved himself up into fourth place. That's the highest that we've seen him. Also got Minsky of Norway in third. He's had a quiet race up until this point. Emani Burhan Kripa is in the lead. Jimmy Gressier led a very aggressive first three kilometres through in eight minutes and nine seconds. I wonder if the cross-country specialist was trying to turn this into something of a fartlek. That would suit him. That's what you experience if you're going on over mud, up and down hills. And Jimmy Gressier perhaps just trying to flood everyone's lap system with a bit of lactic at the start, let it settle down, and now he's going to start lifting again and trying to match his longtime rival, Italy's Yamani Burhan Kripa. Yeah, Gressier looking very happy, very composed with how this is panning out. Isaac Camelli also looks strong at the front, but he's dropped out the race as well. Kripa there just gesturing for Jimmy Gressier to take over. Jimmy Gressier is either not paying attention or didn't fancy it one bit. Muski of Norway is going to be the athlete at the front. Let's see, that's three laps to go, just over one kilometre going to really going to start speeding up and you can see all of a sudden we're down to a group of just eight athletes Isaac Camelli looked tired in the 5,000 meters and perhaps just not quite recovered from his exploits in Oregon it was interesting to see as he went round Gressier he just touched him in the back just to let him know he was coming around <laughs> interesting touch there scrub having not featured at all so far, has moved up as well, but now it looks as though it's Mazenge who's really started to pour it on. He's got a long run from home. So they've, they've got a kilometre to go, and they're just coming up to see two laps to go as they come down the home straight. Mazenge really asking questions of the field. They've got two laps to go. He is the four-time Norwegian champion. He has a half marathon time of 60 minutes and seven seconds. That's really fast. Anything around about the hour for a half marathon is impressive. And Megni, Mesni of Norway clearly feeling he doesn't want this down to a sprint finish. Jimmy Gressier leading the charge at the moment, trying to pull the other five athletes back to the Norwegian. Just another note there, 21-year-old Efram Gide of Ireland is having the run of his life tucked in at the back of this group. A brilliant run as well from Pietro Riva of Italy. He was fifth at the European Cup, fifth here at the moment in the European Ch Senior Championships. And we've also got Jan Schrub of France, sixth at the European Cross a few years ago. So there's a quality group of five athletes trying to reel back in. Zeri Mesny of Norway. But this time they're going to hit the bell. bell. Agressio and Kripa want to get themselves on this podium any higher than second or third. They've got to go now. Mesny of Norway has got 30 or 40 metres on the other athletes. They're going to have to unleash a massive last lap if they're going to catch the Norwegian. We saw Jakob Ingebrigtsen take a gold medal in the 1500, in the 5K. Could Mesny here make it three goals for Norway? He's looking over his shoulder. It's a nervous look for the Norwegian, but he doesn't need to be nervous. If anything, he's stretching his lead as he comes around with 250 to go. Jimmy Gressier, the Merham Van Kripa are working really hard to try and reel the Norwegian in. Here goes Kripa. He's gone fast. He's gone hard. He didn't want to take any of the other athletes with him. 200 metres to go. Kripa could be about to cause an upset in the closing few metres here. Could he convert his bronze in the 5,000 to gold here? But the Frenchmen are coming as well. Schlupp of France is moving the fastest at the moment. He's trying to take Jimmy Gressier with him. 100 metres to go. Norway first, Italy second. And here goes Jemene Berhan Kripa. He is going to take a gold. Kripa kicking hard. He looks left, he looks right. He's got nobody for company. It's going to be a win for Italy. A brilliant second for Zerdi Mesny of Norway. That was a tactical masterpiece from him. But Jemene Berhan Kripa his last 250 metres was so, so, so quick. I thought it was impossible he could make up the advantage built up by the Norwegian coming into the bell. 
Yamani Burhan Kripa, we've seen him do this in cross country. We've seen him do it in age groups, but he's done it now as a senior. And a big, big run from Jan Schlub of France. It looked like he was going to pull Jimmy Gressier back into the picture, but in the end, he was the number one Frenchman. Gressier happened to settle for four. Well, extraordinary because when Kripa started that kick, he just looked behind him and I thought, what's he doing that for? Focus on front, he was analysing the situation and then unleashed a masterclass over the last 200 to overtake Mazengi, who done so well to lift the pace, 66, then 62 seconds, coming through with two laps to go and you just thought the Norwegian had enough. But do not discount your man behind Pippa. He took on the lead when others didn't want to, certainly not Gressier, after taking out the early pace. And it's a gold medal for Italy, taking away from uh, the Norwegian and also the French who wanted their first of these championships, but the wait goes on. Well, well, I was very, very impressed as well. You have to say the fastest finisher of all three of them was probably Scrub coming around over the final 150 metres. But the track just ran out for him. Another 20 metres, and I think he could have converted that bronze into silver. But Mazenge. Who had him down as a potential medalist? Not me, it has to be said. Schub emulating Perseus Karlström, a Swedish race walker, by donning a silly hat. Roger of Austria getting some welcome applause from the crowd. They support every athlete here from first to last. But Johanny Berhan Kripper joins athletes that have got two medals at this championship. We've had Bol Ingebrigtsen and Tristan Piotti take double titles, but Kripper gold here to add to his bronze in the 5,000 metres. Joins the likes of Eilish McCulk and Yasmin Chan. They took two medals over these longer distance. Kumbunji on the other end of the spectrum and Zarnell Hughes in the sprints. And, uh, just brilliant running there from Kripper. That was a tactical masterpiece, to be honest, from the Norwegian and the Italian. i got to say that Mesny knew he might not be able to match the kick. The likes of Gressier, Kripper and Shrub and instead just stole a march. It was around about the kilometre and a half to go. Mesny just went, right, enough of getting clipped and shoved. If I've waited enough laps. I am just going to go for this and challenge anybody to come with me. Well, these are the early stages of the race where there's a lot of chopping and changing. This is the break from Mesny. Mesengi, tall, lanky stride, and then chased down by Yamani Bahan Kripa. That's worth mentioning now with a, another Italian goal to add to some of the ones earlier in this competition, including the 100 metres to Lamont Marcel Jacobs. We're off to Rome in two years' time, where any Italian defending champion, well, he's going to get an awful lot of cheers, and the roof is going to be raised on the famous 1960 Olympic Stadium. We've also got coming up in Italy on the 11th of December in the La Mandria Park just outside of Turin. We've got the European Cross Country Championships and Yamani Baham Kripa, who's had so much success at that. I'd like to see him be running there. I'm sure he will be. And the conditions will suit him. It's most likely to be dry. When we were last in Italy, in Kier, in Sardinia, it was wonderfully sunny. It was almost unseasonal weather for December. It's a bit like it was a bit like tonight, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's a bit like that in December in Torino. Many Berhan Kripper is not someone I'd bet against at a European Cross Country Championships, and even less so at home. Could we see Megney come back and try and get a medal over the cross country? We haven't seen him at that championship yet, it's a refugee.